here is our angry interpreter. Anger interpreter. Anger, anger interpreter. Yeah, yeah. So he takes what we say and he said it. To like me. we actually meant it. What, like what the I inner mean? voice. I translate from thought leader to English. And uh, one of the examples is our talk to th that we just did with Leonid, what was about data-driven DevOps, and um, we spoke about trust. Leveraging data as you evolve your organizational processes to obtain to trust to demonstrate ROI, uh, but as Corey calls it. It's what you do to cover your ass so you don't get fired for a decision that proves unpopular six months from now. Because you have numbers. Exactly. Okay, so that was a great introduction of Corey. Who are you? Well, let's see. I, I'm going to introduce myself, and Corey's going to do what he's going to do in our talk tomorrow. Anger Translate for me. I'm a recovering software executive on sabbatical. I had executive roles uh, building SaaS software with companies like Teleo, Oracle, and CA. And right now, I pretty much sit at home and watch myself on YouTube. My name is Leonid, and I hang out with famous people. And what else do you do? Uh, mostly, I make fun of large, successful software companies in a hilarious yet sometimes chancy approach at appearing relevant and like I know what I'm actually talking about. I assume shamelessly inspired by John Oliver. You're also an author of Last Week in AWS, a newsletter. Yes. Generally speaking, I gather the news that comes out of Amazon's ecosystem every week and then gently make fun of it just far enough to be funny and hopefully not so far that I wind up sued back into the Stone Age. What about yourself, uh, other than the hat? Yeah, so I'm a um, chief sticker officer with Jeff Rog. I have a business card that said exactly that. So then it's true. Uh, it has to be. It's on a business card. Uh, I also serve as a head of developer relations in JFrog. You have something to say about developer relations? Uh, not in developer relations. I mean, you could call them developers, I suppose. But what he's really saying is his resume is merely one sentence. I'm verified on Twitter. That's <laughs> all it says. It's in 72-point type, but he's very proud of it. And uh, true story, I am verified <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> So tomorrow, Corey and I are going to do a talk, um, mixing a bit of data-driven, uh, being data-driven, leverage data to continue to evolve your organization in this day and age where a lot of processes are changing, a lot of technologies are changing, architectural patterns are changing. But we're going to try to make sure you don't do it like those natives uh, from the cargo cult story. Exactly. We're not to tell too much of the story of what's coming down the road, but the plan is to talk about some anti-patterns that are emerging industry-wide and get a little bit at what's causing that, what's driving the decisions to be made in the way that they are, and then gleefully making fun of it as if somehow we're immune. Are we not? So the That depends on who's asking. So I'll tell you what, Corey, this concept of you making fun of everybody and you get away with it because you are so awesome, mm -hmm. let me give you an alternative explanation. You get... Uh, with it because no one cares. Yes, and also because I'm dead inside. Um, getting back to uh, Swamp data driven Swamp in general, data driven DevOps in, in, in particular. Uh, so, um, Leonid, what, what did we speak about? Well, we talked about becoming data driven uh, uh, and how data can help you drive DevOps culture forward in the organization through three predominant areas of improvement. Earning trust, demonstrating ROI, as well as making your continuous improvement, truly continuous improvement. Corey? It's not sarcastic, but it is very true in that what it gets at is being intentional. It's about understanding why you're doing the things that you're doing. Uh, that's something I won't even bother to make fun of because it's something. It's a lesson that I think everyone that's can That's a disappointment. I was looking for an anger translation of this of this corporate speak. When you're right, you're right. It doesn't happen often, so I want to stop and observe that moment. Now say something dumb. I'll bookmark it on Twitter. Good, good, good. So yeah, now we'll, we'll, we talked a bit about that today, and tomorrow we're going to talk about applying the same concepts, a similar comp concept, things like maturity models and data to whether to evolve your own teams or to influence other teams where you may be helping them to evolve, but you don't necessarily have the authority, i.e. influence without authority to move them forward, but not to move them too forward because not always they're Netflix. And you don't always have to be doing everything the way other companies are. There has to wait, be- Wait, 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 what? Right? That's not what they said on the stage this morning. I don't know, I saw a continuous uh, delivering, continuous debugging them, it's not a requirement? Well, that's the problem with continuously de con continuous delivery. It never gets here. You have to continuously debug? Exactly.
But what about the rest of the conference? Uh, what are some of the key themes for you guys this year? Yeah, so um, uh, this morning we um, we had like a large set of, of keynotes uh, from um, your beloved huge corporations like Google and they spoke about how everybody should behave like Google and I expect you to say something about it tomorrow or right now well it's again it's, it's considered poor form to make fun of sponsors of the conference before they host the party afterwards it tends to be game on no Google makes excellent points they generally are spot-on the the challenge that they sometimes lose sight of is that not every company is Google um, not every company has a business model of gathering the world's information <laughs> of displaying ads against that information and Google readering things, namely turning off beloved services that people <laughs> have come to depend on. You're still, you're still bitter about that, huh? I will never which, get over which that. Which one? The reader? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, the, yeah reader we all are. We, the reader was painful. Google readering. That's a good yeah. one. Oh, oh by yes. the way, gentlemen, so yeah, you, you heard about this concept of liquid software and continuous update, and I would love to hear your take on that. Well, I think uh, in a corporate speak that I'm well, sure we, Corey we, yes, will we, we, promptly we translate. That, yes. You know, the, uh, the, the continuously involving business require environment requiring the companies to become software companies when they weren't before and respond to their competitors much faster than they did. The concept of liquidity and kind of shrinking the architecture and getting more reliable and, and repeatable about their process is, is extremely important. Like, there's a real business benefit to it like i have personally and i may have told that story before changed retail banks from one institution to another just due to the quality of the mobile application right so everybody is the software company time to market and responsiveness and quality of your software is going to be a major differentiator in one's business but i'm curious to see how it gets interpreted by our anger interpreter we sell socks for a living. Therefore, it is critically important that we devote engineering resources to building our own bespoke container orchestration system. But once we decided on this move, isn't continuous update the right approach to implement it? Would you like to answer that or would you like me to feel we'll go for it? No, no, we would just... We, we, we test your boundaries, Corey. Okay. I would argue that Sometimes it's going to depend entirely on the desired outcome. There are some fixed Better projects. Software for socks. That's the desired output. Exactly. At what point does the software for socks become good enough where you don't have to worry about continuously tweaking, improving, and updating it? Both of my feet are warm. We solved the concurrency problem where I have two socks on one foot and none on the other. Great. <laughs> At some point, it's a, you hit a point of diminishing returns until your business evolves yet again. But what about sock personalization? continuously responding to some of your upstart competitors who are new internet-only companies who are selling personalized socks that you can I mean, design I mean, on the don't internet. You, don't you want emojis to appear on your socks when you think about stuff? You have time to worry about that, though, because those small upstart companies are not going to be able to sell to large enterprises because they aren't SOC 2 compliant. Too <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh, for more of Anger Translation, please visit us at the talk tomorrow around 2 o'clock. Or watch the video in astonishing quality after all the technical problems are solved. Uh, yeah, so all the videos of Rambab will be obviously available in JFrog uh, YouTube channel, um, I guess, in a couple of weeks. So, Bach, question for you. 4,000 customers or so, right? More? 4,000 plus customers uh, continuously delivering software. You know, uh, Corey and I were just talking this morning that he sees logos of companies he didn't realize customers because sometimes your software is, is hidden behind the scenes. Yeah, powering. Think about all the companies that wouldn't allow us to put their logo. Those are the interesting ones. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, uh, like uh, some companies. Uh, some companies with, uh, I don't know, different food pieces, beaten food pieces on their logo, and I cannot elaborate more on that. Baruch politely declines the invitation to get himself sued. <laughs> As Leonid used to say, orange jumpsuits are not my fashionable... Yeah, yeah, I don't look good in orange and stripes. So, so but, but on a more serious note, Baruch, what are some of the trends you see in, like, 4,000 customers is a decent sample set for where people are taking their delivery pipeline and how they're thinking about DevOps as a process. I know, uh, shameless plug, you co-authored the book on liquid software. I assume that summarizes some of the trends. So wh what can you share with us? So it's interesting because it's extremely diverse. 
there are Netflixes and Googles, and there are the U.S. Army. Basically, if if we look for two extremes, in uh, one one type of company, do I don't continue? want my nuke firmware to be liquid. Yeah, I, that's my point, right? Um, you you can go ahead and and um, do continuous update and uh, implement the vision of liquid software in your uh, TV series streaming service. Um, not so much in the software that controls the nuclear arsenal of, of the United States, right? So the requirements of, and and surprisingly to you, Corey, a lot of people understand that. Absolutely, they yeah, do. Yeah. No. Well. Uh, so we have different um, uh, cadences. We have d we see different approaches. Uh, we we ask our customers what is good enough in terms of release cadence, and we get answers from I want minutes uh, between when I have an idea and I implement it in code, and this is something that people can use. You must have customers with a lot of great ideas then. Right, and all the way to well, um, let's schedule a release in 2020, um, about the third quarter of it. So it's all over the place. Um, Are there any trends that you see as you sample this data over time? Yes, obviously, obviously, uh, people uh, software becomes more liquid with time, and the experience. What does it mean? What, what what is liquid software? So liquid software is this concept that we release smaller pieces of software more frequently to the to the point where it actually looks like a flow the pieces are so tiny and the frequency is so high it looks like a uh, liquid software that's, i see so uh, the bugs are spillage and splashing as you carry the water to the production environment well the thing is no more boxes it's all about pipes and uh, we um consider ourselves in being this pipe business um, and we help companies to first um, make the software liquid and then deliver it to the end goal of whatever the software need to go a uh, faster more smoothly less splashes less software is being spilled out of this of the pipeline, pipeline. <laughs> yeah, exactly I think I need an anchor translation for that one the big difference between software engineering and plumbing is that when you're doing actual plumbing, the poop only comes up to your knees. Yeah, so <laughs> I hope we are in the water pipes business, not the sewer pipe business. No one in the sewer pipe business got there on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, 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 I'm not sure because that's a very good business to be in. It's critical for most of the humanity and no one wants to be your competitor. Yeah, but why don't you have uh, open source alternatives to your product? Or do you have anybody in your customer base who said, I'm going to go build my own uh, repository manager? Not so that much. doesn't sound hard. I can do that in a weekend, says Hacker News. Yes, <laughs> th th there are some attempts to do that, and they end up exactly as you, plan as you can imagine. So what are some of the challenges? With People attempt to do that. We call them customers two months later. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, um, so it's it's not that there are not a lot of like technology patentable know-hows into it. There is nothing like rocket science into it. It's just a lot of small pieces that first you need to realize that you need to implement, and that takes like years, right? So uh, we we've been in this point of time uh, nine years ago, eight years ago, when people looked at us and they said, "Repository what?" What's wrong with rebuild my artifacts every time from yeah, but SVN? What is actually wrong with that? That it doesn't work? Oh. My two-line code chain should totally take 36 hours to push. Right? And then people said, well, okay, we understand that we have those binaries that we'll probably keep around. We can always shove them into subversion. Oh, yeah, that was designed for that. Right, right, because it diffs the content and yeah. it's very smart with binary. Ah, listen, the bi byte differences of a binary artifact per byte differences makes perfect sense. I What's an audit? Right. So um, it took a lot of time to industry to realize that, and by the time it, the industry realized that, we had a good solution working. <laughs> Timing to market. Right, and, and, and I hope we are doing it again with Liquid Software and the concept of continuous update. People look at us and like, uh, what does it mean? Why do we need it? By the time they will realize we, they need it, we will have a solution for that for them to actually go and buy. And in tomorrow's keynote, 
I hope we will be able to prove that what we are going to really uh, really tomorrow is is the first step towards implementing the continuous update and the vision of liquid software to actual to to product so i think on that tease yeah that yeah, seems like a 20 minutes that That's seems <laughs> like a perfect time to wrap this up thank you very much Yolan. sure well uh, and i figured you could take care of yourself uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh yeah have a good na time here in napa wine time starts soon Cool. Corey? Thank you for having me. I'm sure that is a mistake you will never repeat. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to hear the sound of my own voice. And thank you again. Follow us on Twitter at Elegolnik, Quinny Pig, J Baruch, and a Java. A Java. At, this is, a, this is, this is a the Java. most verified Twitter <laughs> account of and, this group. And hundreds of thousands of followers, followers. that we can only dream of. Four hundred of thousands of followers. Oh, not just four followers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye.